Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do yet another cleaning video. Uh, today we're going to go and clean the Smith & Wesson Model 19 Double Action Revolver. Now, we've been doing a lot of cleaning videos lately of revolvers because we're going to be taking these to the range. We're going to film some uh, range tests with them and so on. But before we do that, I always like to clean the, the firearm before I take it out to make sure there's no problems with it and just to get it all set to go. Now, when it comes to cleaning revolvers, it's really not that difficult. In fact, what I'm going to show you here, you could probably apply to several other double action revolvers that uh, that you might purchase or own or already have. Uh, for basic cleaning supplies, you know, there's a couple different philosophies people apply to it, a couple different types of items people use. Uh, for starters, you want to get yourself a good gun cleaner. I'm a big fan of cleanse oil. This works on basically any finish of firearm. I've never had any issues with it on, on many of the guns that we've cleaned on the channel. Um, I do order this. I'm not sponsored by them, but it does work really well. Otherwise, you can use Break Free CLP. You can use REM oil. Pretty much whatever works good for you that's basically a clean, cleaner lubricant protectant. Okay. Uh, also, get yourself some Q-tips for some fine detail work. Uh, you also want to pick up some cotton cleaning patches. This is an Allen brand. I just buy these up at Walmart. You can also cut up an old cotton t-shirt. I say that in every video if you want the more budget uh, minded approach to getting cleaning patches and those work really good too. Uh, for cleaning brushes, you know, many times your guns might come with uh, cleaning brushes and if it's the right caliber, you can use it in different firearms. This is just a nylon bristle brush and we're going to use this to clean out the chambers of the cylinder on this revolver. I believe it's a 357 Magnum bore brush. It's pretty close to 357 Magnum. It'll work just fine and since it's plastic, it's not going to do any damage. Uh, one piece cleaning rod is really nice to have for certain applications. I like to use this to put a, to put a patch on it, just run it down the uh, chambers to get all the excess oil out of them once we're done scrubbing them and getting them cleaned out. You also might want to pick up uh, some sort of a cleaning brush or an old toothbrush. Uh, I don't ever use any that are metal. This is just nylon. It's nice for doing some scrubbing. Now, this revolver does have a nickel finish to it, so I'm not going to be using any kind of like stainless steel cleaner on it because I don't know if I can do that for nickel. Um, so if you guys have a nickel firearm, go and chime in in the comments down below and let me know what do you use to get rid of the carbon deposits on the front of the cylinder? Is there a special cleaner that you use or a combination of a brush and a cleaner and a polish cloth? I'm kind of curious. We're not going to get too crazy with it because it is a very nice shiny finish and we do want to keep it that way. Now, when it comes to cleaning the actual barrel itself, you got a lot of options. There's different types of bore snakes that are out there and cleaning rods and so on. Me, I'm just a big fan of bore snakes. If I've got a bore that's really dirty, I'll use a traditional cleaning rod with a copper brush and then a, a nylon bristle brush and all that fun stuff. This is just a Hoppy's bore snake, Hoppy's 9 bore snake. Now, this one's chambered for 9mm, 380, uh, 357. So when you buy it, you can use it with multiple calibers. It's basically just a rope that's got some, some copper bristles in it. You put some oil on both sides of it, you pull it through the barrel, a couple passes through, it's going to get your barrel clean. But again, if you've got a really dirty barrel or you run this through the barrel a couple times and you're still, you're still seeing a buildup in the grooves of the rifling inside the barrel, then you may want to get yourself a more serious setup for a cleaning kit, like a one-piece cleaning rod designed for this caliber and so on. Uh, but typically what we do, this does the job. I want to send a little shout out to SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska, and SS Pond is the sponsor of this channel, and uh, they do provide us with a lot of the firearms that you see. These come from the owner of SS Pond's private collection from his armory, and uh, we have an opportunity to take them out and shoot them and clean them and just have a good time with them. So Stan, thanks for loaning us this revolver. We're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, without further ado, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so with just a few drops of oil on a cleaning cloth, let's just go ahead and wipe everything down, wipe off the outside, get rid of any buildup that might be on there. Again, you don't need the firearm excessively oiled. If this is your first revolver, congratulations, you made a very, very good purchase. These are really nice revolvers. Uh, 357 Magnum is a personal favorite for caliber. It's great. Okay, there we go. Just a general wipe down of the outside. And again, we're going to wipe off any excess oil when we get done. Okay, go ahead and open up that cylinder again. Let's just go ahead and wipe off the rear. Now, again, like I said, if you guys can give me some suggestions for cleaning the front, because this one does have a lot of carbon buildup on it, uh, do let me know. And I, this is not my revolver, so I'm not going to be doing that cleaning. But if I do purchase one in the future, you never know. Um, it's definitely going to be nice to know what you guys use to clean off the front of that uh, cylinder to get all the powder off the front. Okay, go ahead and wipe out the inside of the frame. Now, if you have a heavy buildup, if you notice any real heavy buildup, you know, feel free to use the brush just to do some scrubbing on the inside. Put a little, put a drop of oil on the brush and just scrub away until everything comes nice and clean. It's really not that dirty. This looks really good. Beautiful, beautiful revolver. Now, the next thing I like to do is kind of floss up in this area because you do get a buildup of carbon. So what you do is just uh, set the revolver down and just almost like a piece of floss, but you're using a cleaning cloth, just go up in there and just kind of go across a little bit, back and forth. 
you need to use a couple cloths on it to get it clean, you can do that. This is going to be an area where you're going to notice a lot of buildup. You get a lot of flash and a lot of powder that happens here, a lot of carbon fouling that can happen here too. Okay, we're gonna grab a clean cloth now. All right, let's go ahead and wipe out the inside portion where your extractor sits. Go and wipe off the crane. It's the neck that attaches the cylinder to the frame. Okay, go and wipe off the initial portion of the uh, extractor. Sometimes this is called a base pin, depending on the type of revolver. Okay, go ahead and press. There's a lot of oil buildup on here, so we're gonna go ahead and give that a wipe off. Okay, now the next thing I like to do is just go ahead and put a couple drops of oil down the barrel. This is what I refer to as marinating the barrel. We're going to let that soak for just a little bit. There we go. And we'll go ahead and prep our bore snake. Now, do not ever swing the cylinder shut like you see in the movies. Okay, if you do that, <laughs> if you ever do that in a video like I did one time, you're going to be paying for it for years because people will rip you for it. Apparently, it's really hard on the crane. It's, it's, it's not good for the cylinder. So be gentle on that aspect of it while you are prepping the firearm. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and clean the barrel. So go ahead and take your bore snake and just put a couple drops of oil in front and in back of the copper bristles that you have. If you notice the bore snake going through with very little resistance, there's a chance that your bore snake is worn out, especially if you've been using it for years. I end up having to replace these every couple years, unfortunately, but they're only $10, so they're not super expensive. Okay, go ahead and drop the weight down the barrel. Now we've already got oil in the barrel, so it is heavily oiled, but uh, two or three pulls through with the bore snake will do wonders for the uh, the finish inside the rifling and so on. Okay, this is still fairly tight. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that two more times and then we'll check the bore and see if it's nice and shiny. Okay, if you have your bore light, you can go ahead and shine that down the bore and check the rifling and see if it's nice and shiny. Should be able to see the swirls in there. There we go. Looks really good. The only problem I have with these uh, 357 Magnum revolvers is every time I clean one, I wanna buy one. So I guess you could say it's a good problem to have, but I just absolutely love them. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to clean out each of the chambers of the cylinder. So I'm just going to put a drop of oil down each one. Again, everybody has their own method for cleaning their firearms and go ahead from the rear to the front, just go ahead and push the brush in. You can scrape a little okay, bit. We'll go ahead and just grab a clean cloth and just wipe off the excess from the front, any of that dirt and grime that might have come out of the end there. You can go ahead and take that same cloth and just go ahead and put a drop of oil on it, one drop. And we're just gonna run the patch down the chamber of each one. Make sure that we get all the muck out of it. Uh, if you want after this, you can then run a dry patch and if it's still dirty after you get out the excess, you can then run one more wet patch down it if you need to. Now with the uh, cleanse oil, you don't have to worry if you get the cleanse oil on the wood furniture, that would be your hand grips or your hand stocks, whatever you like to call them. Um, it's really not a big deal. Do wipe off any excess oil that's on the wood, but cleanse oil has not done any damage to any of the wood of any of the firearms I've cleaned so far in the channel. You want to definitely check your label and, you know, make sure it says, hey, you know, keep this away from wood or polymer and so on. Now, with the drop of oil on a Q-tip, go ahead and pull back on the hammer and just go ahead and wipe. Just go ahead and scrub out the inside of this. Get rid of any buildup or grime, especially if this was a carry weapon, there could be a buildup of some grime, some grime and some crud down here. Go ahead and wipe off the sides of the hammer. This metal has kind of a natural patina to it. Just as it ages, you're gonna kind of notice it blackening up just a little bit, and that's normal. Okay, uh, you can go ahead and just do some cycling of it. Uh, don't dry fire it. At least I try not to because, again, these aren't my guns, but you can at least just test it, make sure the action's okay. All right, guys, so that is basically what it takes to clean the Smith & Wesson Model 19. This is a 19-5 with a nickel finish. And again, shout out to SS Pond for loaning us this revolver. We're gonna get this out to the range soon. But uh, guys, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, mash that bell so you don't miss any notifications. Check my channel. I've got about 75 cleaning videos over there right now. And I've got a ton of great other product tests and range tests and so on. And we also do a podcast that we call Caliber Corner, which we host Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time over on my channel, where we talk guns and ammo. If you're ever curious if we've ever covered a topic, just type in Caliber Corner space and then the topic you're looking for. And you might be surprised at uh, what comes up because there's a good chance that we've covered it, whether it's reloading or prepping or truck guns or whatever. Again, Caliber Corner Space in your topic and the search box will probably tell you uh, any episode that we've ever had with that topic. So anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks for checking it out. I want you to like and subscribe. But in the meantime, I want you guys to have fun, be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye.